So back to my ultramarine blue and white, maybe a little bit of that alizarin scrubbed in here. I will just block in this foam pattern. Maybe a touch in here. You see the whole idea about these foam patterns, I'll go into more depth on those on another lesson, but the whole idea is when a wave comes in and crashes, it creates a lot of foam, blankets of it, and it kind of sits there for a while and slowly dissipates. Then the next wave comes in and picks up the remains of that last wave, the foam. And so you have these foam patterns that ride up the face of the wave every time. Now this is in an active sea, in a very quiet sea, you won't have all those foam patterns. In a stormy sea, the entire wave may be foam, foam covered. So you don't actually see any water at all. If sunlight <clears throat> if it shows up on clouds with a bit of color, it will on, on foam as well. And this is the breaker foam. So I'll just block that in. We'll, we'll refine it later. How do you stop the underpaint from mixing with your white? Okay, the question, a very good question, how do I stop the underpaint from mixing in to what I'm doing, what lies over? That's a very important thing because it can mess up your painting entirely. It gets muddy and you get white paint where you don't want white paint in these clear areas by blending too much. You'll notice that when I paint, I'm not using the tip of my brush. The tip with its paint digs into the paint already there. By going over with a light touch with the edge, let's take the larger brush to, just to demonstrate. Instead of going with the tip, which digs in, I lay down the edge flat like this. Not this way necessarily, but like this. And you see how thin a line I could get with a fairly large brush a moment ago. And the idea is a very light touch, very light, so that you're just dragging that paint over. Plus the fact, if I, before I uh, paint over any of this, if I knock down, <coughs> if I knock down the tooth, the texture of the paint underneath, then I will have less chance of digging into it also. Feeling that if you fell on it, it would hurt. Not, not that you would fall and bounce off or roll off. It would hurt. So that's the idea. Don't make lumpy, lumpy rocks, please. <laughs> make good, solid, strong rocks. And we'll refine these later as well. Very, very dark at the moment, but that, that will change. <clears throat> that is the, the cake without the icing. That is the house without the facade. This is the structure upon which I can build and make a realistic painting. Some artists would leave it at this point, basically. A little refining here and there. Other artists would carry it on to where I will carry it. 
Other artists would carry it on to where it is a photograph. And it doesn't matter because you must choose what you want. You must choose exactly where you want to stop. And that stopping point is called uh, hammer time. <laughs> if, if, somebody do, if, if you don't stop, there should be somebody around with a hammer. <laughs> hey, <laughs> boink. <laughs> time to stop. <laughs> because, of course, any work can be overdone. You can go so far with it that you mess it up. But this should teach you something very important. <clears throat> Lay out your structure. Work in your colors. Know where your values are. Block in everything. And then you can say, ah, I'm ready to refine it. I may want to change some colors. This is the time I step back from it. Just a few. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to distract again from up in here. Now, I can, besides having foam patterns on this swell in here, this is a, f a front swell, not a back swell has a little translucency. I can also break it up by making chops like this. See how it breaks up into a bunch of little swells instead of uh, one large one. And the same thing over here, I can do this. Because all this is that I'm putting in now is a reflection of the sky in little troughs on, on a swell.